In Ecclesiastes 1, 6, 5, he asks a very interesting question. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again unto its circuits. So the wind follows circuits. That's an interesting insight, Solomon. But then he has, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Well, that's an interesting thing. Have you ever think about that? All the rivers go into the sea, but the sea doesn't get full. It stays there. Why? Because unto the place whence the rivers come, thither they return again. And he elaborates that in the book of Job talks about this, Job 36. He maketh small the drops of water, they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof, which clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. Put those together, you have the water cycle. It took them to 1700 to codify. But uh, it's astonishing to discover how the Bible, incidental to its purpose, anticipates scientific discoveries. The water cycle we've just gone through. The jet stream is described in Ecclesiastes 1. The whole concept of evaporation we've just talked about and also talked about in Amos 9.6. The source of river water. Fresh water springs in the sea, Job talks about in Job 38. Did you know that there's fresh water springs in the ocean? Many people don't know that. But one that fascinates me is in Psalm 8 and in Isaiah 43, it speaks of pathways in the sea. Now most of us read those passages and take treat them as po poetry, and don't stumble over them. But there's a guy that was fascinated by that. There's a guy by the name of Matthew Fontaine Mari. And he was fascinated <clears throat> with his phrase that there's paths in the seas in both Psalm 8 and Isaiah 43. So he was born in 1806 in Virginia. And uh, in 1825, he resolved to chase this down. And the way he did it was he joined the Navy as a midshipman. And uh, in 1842... He was put in charge of the depot of charts and instruments. And he started organizing the collection information of all the ships that were sailing. And he collected this data, and then he published maps in 1848 of all the main wind fields of the earth. And uh, he is recognized around the world as the father of oceanography. And when you march at the Naval Academy from Bancroft Hall, which is the dormitories, down Stribling Walk to the academic group, the center building of the academic group is, you know, Maury Hall. And uh, Matthew Montaigne, Maury. So as a Naval Academy guy, I had to work that in. But it's interesting because he was a Bible-reading guy, found something in the Bible that puzzled him, and it altered his life. That became his career. And he founded the, the area of oceanography. There are many stories like this. It's interesting that there is a science quiz, and I'm not going to give it to you. God is. If you read the book of Job, you know that Job goes through a real ordeal, and the real ordeal wasn't just the loss of his wealth and the loss of his family and the loss of his health. The real ordeal was the friends he dragged along. If you've got friends like that, you don't need enemies. And most of the book of Job is this dialogue as these guys talk about why is Job sitting on this ash heap so forlorn. Well, finally, near the end of the book, the last four chapters of the book are the fun part of the book. Because God finally says, enough's enough, and he steps in. And he starts asking them questions. And uh, there are 77 questions in the final four chapters of the book of Job. And he, uh, science's mandate, by the way, in the scripture comes from Genesis 1, verse 28, where Adam is told to subdue the earth. And science is supposed to pursue and find truth. And it used to. There used to be scientists that were God-fearing, Bible-literate people. Modern scientists are totally illiterate of the Bible, have no grasp of what it's about, and furthermore, are committed not to truth, but to, to developing an explanation that denies God. It has to be totally mechanistic. And if you try to do more than that, you get fired. There, the, the landscape's littered uh, with careers that have cracked up on that one. It should have been, science should have been the great testimony to the majesty and the glory of God. Instead, it's become a device for ignoring and rejecting him and preying on the uninformed. 